Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at the basics of control circuits, also known as switching circuits or transistor switching circuits. So let's get started. Now, all control circuits or switching circuits typically have the same parts to them. And we're going to look at what these parts are. So it says that control circuits usually involve a combination of a potential divider, transistor and device, for example a bulb or a motor that can be switched on or off in response to a change in physical conditions. So what we mean by physical conditions is external conditions, such as light intensity changing or temperature changing for example. These three parts we say are called the input, process and output respectively. So if we look at this diagram we've got this input on the left hand side, the process in the middle and the output over here. And this is our control circuit, so we've got 0 volts and Vs, so that is our potential difference, and we've got two components like two resistors in series here. So if we ignored all this stuff in the right for now, all we've got here is a potential divider circuit. If we then ignore this though and look at just the middle part, you'll notice that we have a transistor in series with a resistor. And this transistor is going to be the processing part. And lastly, we have the output, which is the thing that you want to happen in the end. So here we've got an LED with a resistor, and this is the thing that we want to switch on or off. So what we're doing here is combining things that we've looked at already, such as potential divider circuits and within the input part we'll often have a thermistor or an LDR so we can use our rules for turd and lard that we've seen previously. We can also use our knowledge of transistors such as NPN or MOSFET transistors for the processing part and then for the output we can use our knowledge of different circuit components that can switch on or off such as LEDs, bulbs, buzzers and motors and so on. Next it says here that it is always the voltage across the lower component that determines the voltage across the transistor. That is the voltage across the lower component is equal to the voltage across the transistor. So if we look at the diagram you'll see I've labelled the lower component because this is the one that tells us what the voltage across the transistor is and therefore if the transistor is going to be switching on or off and therefore if the output device is going to switch on or off as well. So a key rule to remember for switching circuits or control circuits is that the voltage across this lower component is equal to the voltage across the transistor and this is going to be very useful for understanding what's going on with these circuits. Lastly, it's very common for you to see a variable resistor as one of the input components over here on the left hand side. So it could be the upper component or the lower component but there's a reason for using a variable resistor in these circuits and it says it here. So a variable resistor in a control circuit is used to control the conditions, for example the temperature or light intensity at which the transistor will switch on or off. So if you're asked to explain or state the purpose of the variable resistor in the control or switching circuit, then you need to state these keywords to control the conditions at which the transistor will switch on or off. And you can try and be specific to the question. So if it's talking about an LED, then you're trying to switch the LED on or off as well. Or if it's a buzzer, for example, you could say it's used to control the conditions at which the transistor and therefore the buzzer will switch on or off. Now, the last thing I want to talk about for control circuits is the application of these circuits. So why would we use them and where might you see them in everyday life? Well, a good thing to think about is smart technology, i.e. smart smart homes. So an example might be something that turns on or off in your home as a response to a change in external conditions from light or temperature. So for example, you could have a control circuit set up in your home for a fan to turn on if it gets too hot, or you could have heating turning on when it gets too cold. You could also make things happen when light intensity changes, for example, if the light level outside drops below a certain level, you could have your roller blinds close. And in that case, you also might want your lights turning on or becoming brighter. Another simple control circuit to think about that responds to light conditions would be street lamps. So for example at night time when the light level outside drops below a certain value then the street lamps will start turning on. And then in the morning when it becomes brighter and the light level increases above a certain value, then the street lamps will turn off. And this all happens automatically due to sensors. Nobody is actually physically switching these street lamps on and off at a certain time. And so if we think about these examples with the variable resistor aspect, what we could do is we can control the conditions at which these things would turn on at. So for example, the street lamps, we could control what light level the street lamps turn on or off at, which is going to be useful because the light level will change throughout the year as we get different seasons. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching, if you made it to the end I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.